While we sleep at night, all sorts of life goes on around us. And during the COVID-19 lockdown, many of us have become more aware of the animals very close to home. In this activity, we'll take the traditional idea of the pet doll as a way of focusing on some of the most fascinating creatures of the dark. Whilst diurnal butterflies are often seen as joyful and fragile, nocturnal moths may seem sinister. They nibble our clothes and flap around the lampshades. But when you look closer, moths are mysterious and beautiful, with many images hidden in their patterning. The first thing to do is to find and study moths in your own environment. Still, fairly warm, humid evenings are the best time to look for them. Recently I made a very basic moth trap, from bucket to with a lid, in which was inserted a funnel with its tube cut in half. Inside there are egg boxes for the moths to land on, and attached to the handle is a small LED light. But it didn't catch any moths, so it looks like I'll have to make further adjustments. Meanwhile, my brother, who's an entomologist, lent me a professional mercury vapour lamp with an incredibly bright light. It was set up at dusk, and by midnight, a few moths had gathered there, even though it was a fairly cool evening. But this equipment is very heavy and expensive. We don't need it in order to see moths in our own environments. With the light on in the evening, they'll often land on walls and window panes and other places around the home, especially where it's well illuminated. If they're easily and safely reachable, you may be able to photograph them with your mobile phone or watch and draw them through a magnifier. You can find more detailed information to work from online and in books. Looking them up can help you identify them, although it can be tricky. There are over 2,500 species of moths in the UK, but only 59 of butterflies. As well as being amazingly diverse in appearance, they also have some very strange and fascinating names. One of my old favourites is the cinnabar moth, with its distinctive yellow and black striped caterpillars. They can be found on common ragwort in many parts of Somerset during midsummer before becoming brilliantly crimson and sooty grey moths. Of course, butterflies belong to the same order of Lepidoptera and they have many different characteristics between them. Some of them are very rare indeed, such as the large blue butterfly, Fengaris arion, that has gradually been reintroduced to parts of Somerset and beyond in the last few decades. So now it's time to start the activity. When you've selected one of your favourite moths to work with, you can make a rough sketch of the outline on your selected paper or card. I like to use watercolour paper, but any clean, spare card or paper will do. Just put your peg down on it and draw an outline of your moth. If you're making several, try to keep them all the same scale and size. When studying moths, you'll have noticed that they can vary a great deal. So you can vary the shape of the strong support card that you attach to the peg. Onto these you can assemble your cut out moth wings and bodies. But don't glue them on just yet, they need to be painted first. You can now start bringing your moth or butterfly to life. Any water based paints, ink, felt pens or crayons may be used for colour and texture. Or you could collage with paper or fabric. The insects are symmetrical and you can also try filling in the rough design of a wing pattern in nice thick paint and then printing one against the other quickly before it dries. It works best on non-absorbent paper.
Many moths have patterning that mimics the background of their habitat, making them extremely well camouflaged. You could try printing ink or paint on with leaves, bark and other found materials. Some of them also have areas of iridescence on their wings. You can use a pearl luster paint or mica to achieve this kind of effect. I'm one of those people who likes to paint with the rich colours of locally collected earth pigment. This can be found in many areas of sunset, in places where deeper, cleaner layers of earth are exposed. Though not where there's any danger from landslips. This raw and ancient colour can be prepared for use in many different ways. A simple method is to go outside and break it into small pieces, wearing goggles and a mask, and grind it into a fine powder. This can then be sieved and mixed with a medium to make a smooth paste of brighter colour. I mix it with a few drops of gum water, but you could also use PVA. Commercially refined pigments can also be bought, but do read safety information before buying, although most earth colours are non-toxic. Once all your moth parts are painted and dried, you can glue them onto the peg support. Finishing touches can be added before you decide how you're going to show your fabulous moths. This moth moon was made by visitors to Thelma Hulbert Gallery in Honiton in autumn 2019, where people of all ages enjoyed working on this together. Starting with ancient Egyptian frescoes, you may like to do some research to find moths and butterflies in art. Further information, books and links can be found in the PDF accompanying this film.